Kev, it's been a while since you've been in the ring. How's things going? Going really good. Um, the nights I stepped into the ropes would have been eight months later since I last fought, so I'm extremely hungry. I'm very happy with my shoulder rehabilitation post-surgery. My trainer, Peter Smith, has put in a phenomenal job with me. My promoter, Rodney Berman, has been very patient, very grateful for that. I've got a new conditioning coach, Josh, from Performance Purist. He's done a lot of good work with me too. And I just look forward to the new outing. At, at the end of the day, it all comes down to skill, and my skills are honed by Peter Smith, and I know that I'm going to continue where I left off, and that's all that matters. Uh, Hayden, he's looking great. Um, you know, Kevin's very professional, the way he deals with his um, sport and the way he deals with, you know, taking care of the injury. Um, even to this time, although the injury's healed up, he still does what he has to do and, you know, make sure that he's got no hindrance or no, like, you know, default in his training. So he's really doing a great job in uh, getting the injury. Actually, I'd say right now the injury is even looking better than his other shoulder, as he told me the other day, you know. So he came in fit, strong already. Um, the biggest thing is just injury prevention, managing him. The biggest thing management-wise was because he's a workhorse. So he actually works too much sometimes, so it's just managing that, managing his stress. Um, the rest is just filling in the gaps because we're in camp, so I joined him in camp. Um, if I had an off-season with him, I would have changed a few things, but that's what I'll do after this next fight. Obviously, depending on whatever fights it takes later in the year. But um, no, his, his improvement's been tenfold, week to week, massive improvements. Uh, heart rate's looking good, his stress management's looking good, he's performing better and he's sparring. So he's definitely looking the best he's looked since he's joined. So everything's coming together nicely. You know, obviously like any operation, you have your needles afterwards, but it's about rehabbing and, and doing the necessary recovery stuff to, to get yourself back to 110%. Very diligent in that department. And like I said, leaving no stone unturned. Arthur Man's a tough competitor, 15 and 0. He's always going to go because he's in there with a better fight on the night. But we cannot overlook him. I know he's a tough challenge ahead. And probably my hardest fight to date on paper, if you look at guys like, yes, he hasn't fought guys like Kutcher, Golovachenko, Kalenga, or Mickey Nielsen. But he's climbing his way up the ranks and he's got to where he is undefeated. So I cannot overlook after man. I've got business to take care of on the 16th of March. Obviously, I think he's a come forward pressure fighter. Very European style, so he's going to throw a lot of punches. I think very, very similar to a combination of... Uh, Dimitri Kutcher and Mickey Nelson. So maybe he's got a bit of snap, but also a little bit of pressure. Nothing I haven't seen before. This is a fight for Kevin, um, and it's not a fight that we're overlooking. It's a fight that we need to win well, because I've got a very uh, good feeling about Usak relinquishing the belt. And when that happens, and Kevin gets over this bridge uh, right now, I think Kevin's going to be the next uh, draw card in in the cruiserweight division as far as you know going for the for the for the unifications of of uh, the belts that Usak owns. I really, really, really wanted a shot at Usak for the unification part. The reason being, he's the best cruiserweight in the world. If we cannot deny that, we we got to give credit where it's due. He's a phenomenal fighter. But going there with the best, it shows you've got the balls, you've got the heart, you've got the courage to take on anybody, and that's what Kevin Green is about. Show me the contract, put enough zeros at the end of the comma, and I sign the dotted line. And, and that's initially what I wanted. I wanted a fight with Usyk because he's, so, he's a remarkable fighter. You know, no fighter can say, oh, he's this, he's, he's, there's no blueprint to him. He's a terrific fighter. It's a true challenge. If he, if he vacates the belts, which I think he's going to, those belts become vacant, and there's many guys I'd like to fight in the top five. I think I'm saying five now in Boxing. So there's guys like Mario Spradez, I believe I beat him every time I fight him. And then there's a danger dog like Kawaki, Tortikus, and I think the biggest danger dog in the division, and people are overlooking him, well not overlooking him, but he's still climbing, is Lawrence Okoli. And I believe that could be a mega fight one day, Kevin Arena versus Lawrence Okoli also. As I say this to a few people, he is naturally, he's got God-given talent. Um, that's what makes it exciting for me, because then I can apply what I know. Um, when I get him to move and do certain drills and stuff, you wouldn't actually even say he's a boxer. Because a lot of his athleticism, I work with a lot of track and field guys. And, um, his, his movement is actually very close to a lot of the top track and field guys, which is a great explanation as to how athletic he actually is. He's 15 and 0, he's no mug. Um, you got to go in there, you're going against the best, the best half a man on the 16th of March. That's how I look at it. I'm not going in there against the guy that I'm going to beat every day of the week. I'm going in there against the guy who wants to take my title from me. I've got to be on my game 110% to not let him beat me, and that's my mindset. So most definitely he's going to post threats. He hasn't gone into where he is if he wasn't a threat to anybody. And he wouldn't be undefeated if he wasn't a threat. But we're going to be nice and composed, listen to my training in the corner, and, and believe in how hard I've worked. The, the thing is, um, you know, once uh, 
you know, as I say, the the titles become uh, vacant and that. You know, Kevin's like one of the top five, you know, looked at opponents uh, or people in in that division. I shouldn't say opponent because I'm, I'm looking at him as one of the guys that's going to be the uh, the contender that's going to be taking over, hopefully. But you know, we can't. We got to look and stay focused at this right now, this current point. Um, you know, fighting overseas, we've got to realize, you know, sometimes there are risk factors, you know, where you fight, who you fight. Um, so we, we've got to play it safe in the sense of, you know, what's good for Kevin's career, where, where he's going to prosper, benefit in, in, his, in his career, going towards the, the route of, uh, like, unifying the titles or grabbing one of the big belts like the WBC, RBF, um, you know, and also how we growing as a financial you know his finances right now because he's done so well and i think it's time now that kevin also starts earning what he's what is due you know that the, these top level guys are really earning good money do you feel that uh, the south african boxing scene has missed you since you've been gone maybe not maybe they have i don't know you know i think i bring a different element to the fight game uh a lot of the business side of it a marketable side of it but at the end of the day you've got to fight and there's some terrific fighters in south africa you've got up-and-coming fighters like Fulani and Bengi who's starting to make his mark in the world uh, division now uh young mark mark who's doing extremely well with peter keaton gomez rowan campbell show so there's a lot of terrific talent so i, w- I would I'd say yeah, i've missed in a, in a different light you know uh bring something different to the table like everyone else does so there's got top cruiserweights like to be some junior the two best cruiserweights in africa are in the same stable as smith's gym so you know it's just another opportunity i'm blessed to be able to get out there again and do what i can for the fans and for my family and for my kids and and for my sponsors, you know, when you go for eight months, you don't realize how much of a, like how much you miss the game. Mm. Like you take a lot of it for granted when you're doing it. Now I take nothing for granted, absolutely nothing. The biggest thing is mental preparation. I think um, the physical side of it, like Peter always told me, Kevin, everybody at the top's fit. Everybody at the top brings something. Everybody at the top's got skill. Mentally, where you at? And I believe that's where these guys can't crack me. Mm. Mentally, I'm an extremely strong athlete, you know, be, having been in a, a, a school of sport from a very young age and, and, and turned professional early, I understand the game and I bump my head a few times to realize what it takes to be a champion. And that's why it's not going to be easy to take the championship away from me. Strength and, and performance and power is not something I question him at all. Um, if anything, it's just maintaining that and, and looking after and nurturing it so that he can have, you know, look after himself outside of in, and inside the ring. Training-wise, more than I'm worried about him in a fight. But there's no question on him knocking out anyone. But. I'm predicting the win, you know. You know, at the end of the day, I, I couldn't give a damn whether it's by knockout or on point. I, I want a big victory. I honestly believe, and I know it. I, I see the way I spar. I see the way I fought Kutcher, Kalinga. I have these guys hurt. Golovacheka, I'm putting down. There's something that I'm not missing, but there's something that I'm not doing. Or maybe it's a, a bigger picture for, to prepare me for bigger fights. But I truly believe I land these boys on the chin, they're going to go. I know I've got power in both hands. But at the end of the day, you cannot take for granted a hurt animal is a dangerous animal. Or a hurt beast is a dangerous beast. That's the way I look at it. So when I have guys hurt in the fight, I do take my time, maybe a little bit too much time. But I get the victory and that's all that matters. Getting the victory and remaining an undefeated champion. That's all that matters to me. We definitely not underestimating Arthur Mann. Um, I, I've got total belief that we are victorious at the end of this fight. Um, how we win? Uh, listen, Arthur Mann's a young, uh, you know, he's trying to hold that W and keep that W. So he's going to fight the best he can to win. Um, I believe Kevin will, there's a great possibility that he's going to stop this Arthur Mann. Um, I really predict Arthur Mann wants he round 12. Hey Arthur Mann, thank you for the opportunity for letting me fight you. I look forward to the challenge. All the best with your training. I look forward to seeing you on the 16th of March. Be ready.